Working with uh, Jonathan and Sean Sansoni from Street Like Me has been uh, such a fulfilling experience so far, uh, especially because of the talent and the versatility they bring in terms of uh, styles of music and the adaptability, uh, depending on the creative project that we are doing. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, at the same time, the biggest challenges for us is that we are working in three different time zones. I'm based in Canada, Sean is based in Australia, and Jonathan is in uh, Candy. So, uh, so it's always a tough, but we have found our groove over there uh, where I would work on my creative briefs and everything and pass it on to uh, Jonathan during my daytime. And when he wakes up in his time, he would work on it while I am sleeping. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, when, when I wake up in the morning, all the samples are there so that I can have a listen to it and give them uh, further feedback to uh, tweak things here and there. So, so far it has been really nice and uh, yeah, we use all sorts of technology available to us uh, in order to make this happen, starting from Skype to Viber to uh, Dropboxes to WeTransfer, what have you. Um, so yeah, I think uh, this is this is the modern, modern creative process as I see it, like you're not restricted uh, in terms of geographical location. You can expand yourself into different countries and collaborate with people that you really like and want to work with uh, without having to be in the same place. Uh, well, it's pretty much like a long distance relationship. You know, there's a lot of Skyping and uh, a lot of messaging that goes up and down, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it, it, it is a challenge at times because sometimes we wish that we could get uh, each other at a particular time but you know while one is wide awake the other is uh, fast asleep so but we do uh, manage to somehow get thing get the ball rolling when collaborating with uh, Jonathan and Sean I often try to uh, give them as much as possible reference material uh, in terms of the feeling that I want to convey uh, hook and uh, which made it so successful um, um, in that regard, I think. Uh, yeah, when I'm uh, working with uh, Jonathan and Sean, I try to give them as much as possible references in terms of the feeling that I want them to create through their music track. Uh, I try to avoid giving exact music style references because then it becomes uh, too influential for them when they're creating something new. Uh, and even Jonathan and Sean, they don't like to have that sort of influence as well. So it's more about references in terms of the human feeling, the emotions that we are trying to convey uh, from the from the film or the documentary that we are uh, that we're creating. Um, and with with regards to an imperfection, that's exactly was the case where I I gave them a, a number of songs, uh, lyrics, and cinematic themes, and even visual material, which which sort of gave them the feeling that I was looking uh, going after. Uh, and I think they hit the nail on the head. I mean, yeah, they got it really right. Uh, uh, and then with the Scars Within and even the background score for the film, I think that's what made it such a success because they really understood the theme and the feeling behind the project instead of just putting some ar musical arrangements and creating some song. The score of an imperfection. Okay. Um... If you're, if you're talking about uh, the entire the background music and the entire score yes it uh, it actually didn't take too long to complete it uh, as uh, it didn't take as long as it uh, took to get the ball rolling actually it took me some time to uh, get into the groove and once uh, we got into the groove of the whole thing then that is when actually uh, we managed to uh, get get everything in, in one go more or less because uh, I I remember we sat down when I was creating the music I had I, I sat down for about an, an entire week or two every time after work because I had to make time because I work during the day so when I get back home for those one or two weeks I remember I remember I just uh, sat and just scored the entire thing uh, right throughout and uh, I didn't stop for too much of uh, you know tweaking or anything and uh, it, it turned out pretty well actually just just a few tweaks here and there but uh, pretty much the basic thing we managed to somehow get it right I mean I suppose when you're in that uh, when you're in the zone <laughs> if I may put it that way
creating this score for the uh, Imperfection movie was definitely challenging because that was our first project together and it was a bit of a challenging storyline as well the the the, char the characters we were dealing with and the storylines that we were dealing with um, um, but uh, Jonathan and Sean they took all the uh, feedback really positively and they pushed the boundaries on, on that project which result uh, all these uh, clothes that they received for this uh, uh, this song scars within so uh, so yeah I think uh, our creative process has been like that throughout uh, since the beginning uh, where you know we never settled down for uh, you know from the first idea or the first draft that we did we always try to you know push further and it always gave us uh, more to work with and it, I mean we, we saw how we grew as creative uh, professionals together yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I mean, with this tea, like we are, with this tea, and and the previous documentary that we did, the Spice uh, Journey, uh, Jonathan and I, like we, we for, for the first time we used like Sri Lankan instruments, Sri Lankan drumming, and Sri Lankan wandam and those kind of stuff, and mixed it with like Western uh, music and started creating fusion styles. Um, so uh, we, Jonathan has and Sean has been really successful in that regard, and we are pushing the boundaries again with this team where we are actually bringing in drum, local drum elements to create the suspense and the horror uh, we needed in the film instead of just using the traditional horror, Western horror music elements to create that sort of uh, feeling. So uh, we're still at the very early stages of development in that project. So. I'm really excited to see what comes out of the other end, uh, probably in 2018. Uh, yeah, the other important thing is the OST or the, or the what do you call, the song which we actually uh, made for him, An Imperfection. Uh, we were really struggling with the OST, you know, we were not, we were not sure as to what we should, uh, how we should make this song uh, or how we should go about with it and then uh, Suddenly one fine day I just, uh, this again happened when I was sitting in, uh, at my office and then suddenly I'm like, uh, uh, I just started writing the ver uh, verses because, um, I don't know, I just, it, it all happened in one go and then the chorus, I think uh, when I was at home I was just uh, fiddling around with uh, some melodies here and then and then suddenly you know this thing came up and then I, it didn't take too long to actually make it. Uh, then again, here once it, it took me a while to really get into the groove. So that's what was a little. Um, that's what took time. But after that, uh, the whole OST was kind of written in about one one and a half days. And then uh, a few tweaks, uh, Rasanga and Rasanga Sean and I we kind of uh, uh, amended a few lyrics here and there. But apart from that. Uh, yeah, that that was quite a surprising outcome, actually. Yes, I was just uh, thinking of you know bands like the Beatles and also a very current band called uh, Rival Sons. So the song was actually uh, on those lines, and I because, because I love the Beatles, and uh, and then even I think uh, when I told Nishan when he was mixing, uh, Nishan actually mixed the song for us, uh, Nishan Daniel. And I told him, think Beatles, think Beatles, you know, this is what uh, it has to be. So uh, even the production of the, even the guitars, the drums and all that, I kind of had it as live as possible because uh, I work just in a bedroom, so I can't really mic my guitars and all that. So whatever that was there, I tried to keep a lot of elements intact, like I intentionally uh, had uh, one of the guitars tuned slightly out so so that it adds a kind of uh, uh, adds a different dimension to it so probably it worked i i don't know i'm, I'm just uh, saying uh, what we did during the production so little little things like that and then came in the harmonies uh this song has if, if you listen to the song it is uh, it has a lot of harmonies uh, included especially in the chorus and also the um, part where we end the couple of uh, whole lot of bars which go and uh, conclude the song that is where we uh, really got the help of uh, Christian and Stefan that is uh, Stefan and Sean's brother and 
uh, those guys really nailed it because i wanted the harmonies to be in a certain way and uh, I, i don't know they just did it uh, it was a struggle at the recording studio because we we, we took quite uh, we paid quite a lot of attention to the harmonies and we actually just went over and over till we got it right because there was a certain i wanted the harmonies to go in a certain way and you know these guys are so patient and so willing to work with me and that was just amazing and i think uh, all those elements put together is what really made that song what it is today and uh, i think up to date that has been one of our most solid uh, productions i think yes my doors or my digital audio workstations i use i i am working on logic actually i i think i've been working on logic pro for the past um, yeah six six seven years probably yes uh, that's what i've been accustomed to and uh, apart from that i use a few uh, i use a number of third party libraries as well which i get my sounds uh, and uh, samples from as well so uh, yeah i use a lot of native instruments um, when it came to rasanga's project yes i use quite a lot of native instruments uh, plugins and uh, and a lot of built in sound as well from uh, logic pro uh, logic pro itself yeah, so.